Now let us show you another picture of those protests which are continuing this evening. You may have noticed the military vehicles in last night's footage. Well, today, Attorney General Eric Holder said he is concerned about the message that police send when they use military equipment to deal with protesters. We asked our chief legal correspondent, Jan Crawford, to look into this. It looks like a war zone. Tanks, combat gear, assault rifles. Police departments in the St. Louis area, like those across the country, are arming their officers with equipment once on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan, much of it free of charge from the Pentagon, but bought with grant money from Congress. In Nina, Wisconsin, officers use a multi-terrain vehicle. The Boise, Idaho Police Department has an MRAP vehicle designed to withstand roadside bombs. So does the Warren County Sheriff's Department in upstate New York. Bud York is sheriff. I'm hoping I never have to use this vehicle, but if I do have to use it, I'm not going to have to worry about my people or possibly the public being injured because it certainly can save them. According to one report, the federal government has doled out more than $34 billion to local police departments since the September 11th terrorist attacks for military-style equipment. To me, this doesn't look like America. The Cato Institute's Walter Olson says the military gear can actually incite more violence. Some in the crowd might get more violent if they believe, wait a minute, this isn't my neighbor who's a policeman. This is a completely alien force that I have nothing in common with because they're coming at me with an armored vehicle. Now, law enforcement in St. Louis County have gotten more than half a million dollars worth of military equipment from the Pentagon, including seven Humvees and a dozen M-16s. But, Scott, a congressman here in Washington today is proposing legislation that would scale back that military equipment program for local police. Jan, thanks very much.